Nature is the door to happiness. The things that you see, the experiences that you have while kayaking, stand out. Not only is it people's own personal kind of spiritual experiences that we try to create in the wilderness for people, it's also um, it's also like this community building thing, right? There are lots of keys you can use to unlock it. And like we all got to be goonies for a little bit if we grew up in the 80s. Um, that was, <laughs> you know, that was an absolute dream to go find, you know, a pirate's chest full of gold. Uh, now, as you can tell, I mean, we're, we're pretty passionate about catfishing. Uh, you know, we, we could keep talking uh, all night long, really. Let us help you find your key. Welcome to the 12 Hike Podcast. Open yeah. my eyes, and here's this Milky Way. And I'm looking at this, and like, like it was an instant reaction. Like I went to nudge somebody next to me because I wanted them to see the same thing I was seeing. I wanted to share that with somebody, and I was. If you grew up the way I did, catching a catfish is pretty straightforward. You tied on a heavy sinker, a big hook, and the smelliest bait you could find, and you cast that thing out as far to the river as you can. That was it. You set your pole down, and waited for something to eat your disgusting blob of bait. There was no reeling it in and recasting. You just sat there and waited. It was agony. For some, this is the perfect way to fish. You get to sit there and consume some tasty adult beverages under the guise of fishing. Don't get me wrong, I've seen some very impressive fish caught using exactly this method. But it never worked for me. I even tried pay lake fishing. Surely a small pond full of hungry catfish would result in me bringing in a big blue or shovel head. Not only was I wrong, fishing in pay lakes only increased my displeasure for catfishing. Little did I know, we are in a catfishing revolution. These huge, thrilling fish are being treated with a new level of respect and cunning. True catfish anglers are employing advanced tactics and technology to put consistently, consistently large fish in the boat. On today's episode, I'm going to be speaking with Skip and Roger. These two men have made catfishing their passion. We're going to discuss gear, bait, and tactics, and what keeps them chasing whiskers. This is Zach Jenkins, and welcome to the 12 Hike Podcast. It's about the only place that's safe in my house. <laughs> because I can I can lock all the doors, and then unless they have a, a coin or something, they can't open them. Uh, this, this makes it a little bit easier for me. Yeah. Uh, so, Skip, I hear you really good. Roger, are you there? Yep, I'm here, buddy. All right, good deal. Uh, you've got a YouTube channel, so you're used to to talking all the time. I get that. Yeah. Um, the only the only difficulty with having two of you, we we'll have to be sure we don't talk over each other. Gotcha. So just kind of be careful about that. And if we do, whatever. I mean, we're just guys talking about catfishing anyway. Who the heck really likes that stuff anyhow? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and admit it right now. I'm not a big fan of catfishing, but uh, I'm, I'm not about to turn away an opportunity to catch a, a giant blue cat. I mean, that, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, Skip, how do you and Roger meet? How do you know each other? Well, it's... Uh kind of interesting story um we watch a guy called chris Sodders on uh, youtube and a big cat fisherman uh he used to fish tournaments and stuff and um i just noticed i was watching the comments and i uh, noticed that roger was talking uh, that he lived in frankfurt ohio which is like you know, 15 minutes for me. And, 
you know, he was talking about fishing the river. And I really wanted to try it. I tried to, me and Terry, my son, tried a couple times and um, was really intimidated by it. Um, so, um, long story short, you know, just I just friended him on Facebook and um, it, it's kind of, kind of, uh, I also found another guy through his Facebook that fished Rocky Fork. And I, at the time, I was actually into crappie. I was trying to learn how to catch crappie up there at Rocky Fork. Uh-huh. So I actually reached out to him first. And, you know, we fished a, f- a couple times. And I just kept seeing Roger catching these fish down there. And uh, I think Rick's known you what? 20 years or yeah, so, 15, 20 years, something like that, mm-hmm. 15 years. And um, he said, yeah, Roger knows how to put them in the boat, you know. So finally I just I, I started talking to Roger, um, you know, through Messenger, and and then we ended up hooking up, going out fishing, and we ain't stopped for <laughs> that will be a year in July probably, I think. Yeah, something yeah. like that. We're going to digress from catfish for just a minute because you're talking about crappie. That's the thing I love. Uh, Did you, did you eventually figure out Rocky Fork where to catch them? Yes. Yes. Rick is really good uh, there. Uh, Or, you know, he gave me a lot of great tips and um, put me on some fish. And then me and my son has went there uh, since then. And and we've, we've got on them and even found different locations, you know, just by using what we learned. Uh, so now that I'm not in Ohio anymore, I can go ahead and burn my spot. Uh, if you go to the North Shore ramp and fish all the way out to the wake zone, mm-hmm. uh, that brush, just that edge right there, you'll catch them there all the time. Yeah. And if you get out onto the lake, uh, turn right out of the North Shore and just a little ways up, there's a guy that's got a boat dock that sticks out in the lake. I think I know where you're talking about. Yeah, big metal one. Yep, big metal one. And mm-hmm. uh, you can sit there beside that thing and catch crappie all day long. Hmm. Have uh, you ever we just, on there? Yep. Oh, okay. Yep, I, I fished it. <laughs> we just, we just take a, we took a, like a 16th ounce Roadrunner with a, uh, with a minnow on it. And you flip it underneath that dock. And almost every cast, we would catch something. It was unreal. Hmm. No. So, hot tip for you there. Did you ever fish Paint Creek, Skip? Yes, yes, I have fished Paint Creek. I, yeah, we have, I, I just fished Paint Creek this morning. I brought home uh, 35 crappie. Hey, there you go, Roger. Where'd you catch them at? Um, but I was drifting the wall between the campgrounds and that sand flat. You know, that big shallow flat that is out in the middle of the lake? Yeah. Yep. So, that, there's a big rock wall that runs between there and the campgrounds. And I just drifted... I was uh, trolling back and forth in about 20 foot of water and uh, we brought home 35. We probably threw back 30. Oh yeah, absolutely. Is that what they call the Island? Because that's uh, where we'd always kayak out there. We'd kayak like out to the left and then go behind the Island. And there's a big rock wall there too. Yeah. Yeah. The Island is across from the beach. Okay. Kind of cat a corner from the beach. Actually, when the, when they take the water down real low, you can watch, you can walk from the, um, from the beach all the way out to the island and fish that backside of that deep water. No kidding. Yeah. You, if it stays low enough, long enough, because otherwise it gets really muddy. I mean, you, you're up to your shins and in, in mud to try to get across. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> See, the the thing that we always struggled with is we were always in kayaks. And if you catch Paint Creek at the wrong time, the wind can get ferocious. Yeah. Um, so, Roger, you guys got hooked up on Facebook. Uh, what rivers did you do you primarily fish? I, I fish the Ohio River pretty much exclusively anymore. And... Uh, uh, and Skip was talking about that being intimidating. Now, did you find it intimidating at first? Uh, I didn't. Uh, I was able to 
I was luck, lucky enough to talk to some guys that you know had some insight on uh, on how it works down there. Uh-huh. And uh, honestly, my first trip to the High River, I took a thirty uh, foot pontoon boat. Oh, and, so that's pretty. That's pretty safe then. I mean, yeah. Yeah. So you know, at the time, it was basically a big lake with a little bit of current. I mean, at the at the at the point that I got introduced to it, so. Um, it was intimidating. I, I kind of learned uh, how the river works, uh, you know, under, learned about barges and, you know, what what to do in the case of a, of a uh, barge coming your way or coming from behind. And uh, once we got that under control, uh, I, I just fell in love. <laughs> I caught some big fish and then uh, I went and bought a different boat and now i got a big deep V boat and uh, I fish. Honestly, I love to fish um, flooded water and cold water. I was mm-hmm. noticing that. I was watching your YouTube videos, and almost all of them are wintertime. Yeah. Well, I'm new to YouTube, so I haven't been putting videos out for very long. Uh, uh-huh. And then it was my first winter fishing, so I was new to winter fishing. I was new to YouTube, and I thought, oh, I'm just going to see if I can put some content together, and that's what I came up with so far. What's hey, it? hey uh, Zach. Um, yeah. Not to interrupt, it, but uh, Terry just came in. My son Terry, you remember him, right? Oh, oh yeah, I know Terry. I didn't know if uh, you want to say hi or not. Oh, heck, have him sit down. We can all talk together. I don't care. <laughs> What's up? Hey, say, what do you say, Terry? Not a lot, man. You? Uh, just trying to do some fun stuff here. Um, you know, I'm stuck in this uh, miserable place called Colorado. I can look out my back door and see the Rocky Mountains, and that's nothing. To, oh, it's it's awful. I can't stand it. Uh, the one thing I miss. So I was talking to a buddy of mine about this. Uh, I've had to relearn everything I thought I knew about fishing just because it's so much different here uh, versus catching the warm water species. Uh, All the creeks and streams around here are fed from the mountains. So all of it's cold. It's primarily trout. Uh, and it's it's made me really sad because I've 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 got to learn everything all over again. That would be awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, it's it's rough. But uh, I've got some things coming up. I, I put in for my uh, my deer and my elk tags, and I got both of those. So I'm going to go, I'm going to go out and bow hunt for mule deer and rifle hunt for elk. Awesome. Hope I don't know. I'm I'm already dreading if I'm lucky enough to shoot an elk. Now I'm all I'm out here by myself, and I really am not looking forward to packing that thing out. That that has always uh, that has always been in the back of my mind when it comes to hunting out there like that is uh, having to carry that thing out of there. Uh, well, perfect example. So I went turkey hunting this spring, uh, probably the first and last time. I hate turkey hunting. Don't know why I did it. I just wanted to try it again. Uh, my house sits at about 5,000 foot elevation, uh, where I was turkey hunting was almost 8,000 feet. So yeah, I had to get up at three 30 in the morning, hike to 2,500 vertical feet just to sit down and yelp at a turkey for a few hours and, and get shut out. So, uh, it's not fun. Yeah, under under those circumstances, I would agree. But I've turkey hunted for quite a while, and uh, on my end, uh, you put in enough time, you, it turns out to be pretty fun. I love it. Uh, that's something like you said you was doing trout or whatever now and everything, and you have to relearn everything. All the conditions are different with hunting, but you know once you start to succeed, uh, it's going to be twice as rewarding. It's kind of like. I remember when I first got a boat and I went from bank fishing and I got pretty good at bank fishing when it came to bass and even catfish, especially channel cat. Um, and then I got a boat and it was like, everything was different. And my first year, most of the time I got skunked. 